Well, Coach, uh, obviously a lot on the docket as you head into this game Friday at Homewood Field, but let's sit back and, and discuss that win in Charlotte because as I talked about with Coach Reese, the word that came up was fight with the win in Boston. What do you think best described the way the guys played down in Charlotte? Chaotic. <laughs> I thought it was chaos. This is like a title fight going back and forth. Yeah. Tucks it in underneath the crossbar as Thule went airborne, score the goal. And it was funny, I talked to Tony Resch, who used to be our defensive coordinator after the game, and he said at halftime, he said to his guys, he goes, we got to make them play six on six because they are really good at chaos. And uh, I thought we found a lot of ways to manufacture goals. Uh, defensively, we gave up some goals in transition, and uh, which we got to tighten up some face-off goals and everything like that. But I thought it was a very chaotic game, and the last play was pure chaos. You know, guy fell down, Jesse knocks it to the ground, is running up by the sideline, almost gets knocked out of bounds, hits Mark Lassini, who finds Jay Carlson coming out of the box, and Jay looks at it, decides not to shoot, and then shoots. <laughs> and it goes inside pipe. So uh, it was a good win for us. I, no, anytime you can win on the road in this league, it's a positive day. Of course. But what does it say about your group that you were able to win in chaos? I mean, and, and we keep describing, and I, and I find it fascinating, this is a, this is a young team or, or one that is still wanting to prove themselves, and it's almost seemed to become a value. I said to the kids after the game, I think we checked three of the four boxes. Mm -hmm. We play with great heart and toughness. We play with great effort. We play with great team spirit. Now, if we can get the execution and we can get the organization down, then we have a chance to be a really good team. But the, anything they control through effort and enthusiasm and team chemistry, they've done a great job with. And this is where I want to get your personnel perspective because those boxes that were checked, the intensity, the chemistry that seems to be building, you still have some key components that may be influxed into this roster in, in coming weeks and then the draft picks. Uh, how do you balance that with such a limited roster? You don't want to mess with something that, that, that is working. How, how do you play that game? Well, that's a great question. I think uh, right now we have the core guys. We need to sprinkle in a star or two. Mm -hmm. And especially it seems to me that if your best players, your stars, are good passers, then everything works. And having Lyle Thompson be a great feeder, having Miles Jones be a great feeder, I think that's really gonna, gonna help us down the road. So as long as we continue to be unselfish as we add the components to it, then we have a chance to be really successful. Players, so it's gonna be decisions for management coaches to be, who do we really wanna build around? Oh my I think this guy God. Seriously? And we look at personnel, and, and we talk, touched on this last week, and it became critical in this game, the face-off. Charlie Rafa's out, we know that. Mike Poppleton starts the game, but then CJ's really the finisher, the closer at the face-off X. Where do you see that position at the moment? And I asked Coach Reese this, is CJ just going to continue to probably play that role of, of specialty face-off man as opposed to really counting on him to carry the load? Well, I think there's two options on that. One is to play CJ as a face-off guy only and dress five other poles mm -hmm. and reduce his load besides the face-off. Or the second is to either acquire a known MLL face-off guy mm -hmm. or the third is to draft one. I think we're definitely going to draft one and we're looking to try to pick up somebody who has MLL experience so that we can diminish CJ's role on the face-off and playing pole. Because he's shown and Coach Reese touched on this, because he's in such great shape, he's providing value in other areas as a defender in transition as well. Yeah, well, I mean, he scores the tying goal at 16. He wins the face-off that we chuck it down to the corner and the game ends. Uh, CJ has come in great shape. I don't think he had as good a year as he wanted last year. Mm -hmm. He was going to make a decision whether he was going to play or not. And in order to play, he had to get himself in phenomenal shape, and he made that decision. And we're very fortunate that he did it because he plays, the, the strength of CJ, he plays with great competitive effort and toughness. And I think that's what he's brought to the team this year. One week closer to the draft, and I'm sure the work's not done until we 
that clock goes on Sunday morning, but where do you feel like you and your staff are in terms of the plan that you have going into that Sunday in Foxborough? I think we're so much further ahead of where we were the last couple of years because we have such a large amount of picks. Mm -hmm. You know, last year our first pick was in the third round. Our, our next pick was in the fourth round, and then we missed two rounds. Now we have uh, one in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth, and, and all the way on through to 12. So I think it's a good draft from the second round on. Uh, we have pick five. Our plan. We have several plans for pick five. Whether we keep it if somebody's there that we really want, or if we try to trade down. And uh, I think we need help in a little bit of every area. And so uh, there are some core values that I think that our team's showing right now that we need to draft those players with the same core values. I mean, I've asked you this before, but you do feel like you can count on getting a guy that could make a difference. I mean, we saw Denver do it last year and on their way to a championship, that for fans thinking, okay, well, the drafts kind of as the season started, will any of these guys really help my team going into June and July? You feel like there is a chance a couple could. Well, it's funny because when we started looking at this draft, we felt like we needed some offensive help. Now we're in the number one scoring team in the league and we're number two from the bottom on defense. So we've kind of now started to look more at some defensive guys. But at the same end, you know, uh, Garrett Dahl is a guy who has a special situation. He could be gone at any time if something goes wrong in the world. So we've got to have some insurance there. So we need, we really think we need a player in every position. Uh, I think it's a great draft for us. Having five picks in the top 19, I think will help us really get some quality players that if we need them, we'll be able to contribute right away. He was number three on the team with 38 ground balls. He was number one in broken ankles caused with moves like that.